What a gift from the choir. Congratulations, Unity Temple, on this day of rededication to your religious home, your sacred space. It is my honor to bring greetings from your wider family of faith across Unitarian Universalism, and specifically from the Unitarian Universalist Association. I'm Susan Frederick Gray, and I am grateful to serve as your president of the UUA. Now, I love that your celebration today is being explicit about this being a rededication not just of the building, but to your mission. I got my invitation a little while ago, and it was really clear that you're not just dedicating the building, but your mission and yourselves to the mission. Because if there was just one thing that I would charge you to remember, it is that your building is not the end goal, no matter how lovely but rather the building is a foundation from which you can live your ministry and mission in the lives of the children and families and the people of all ages of your community. A foundation to live your mission to do justice in the larger world and a sacred space in which you are called to build a community of love and of hope, a community of courage and resiliency, a sacred space in which you're called to build a community of unity, a beloved community. Members, friends, and leaders, and ministers of Unity Temple, what I see in you is a congregation that is stepping up to be bold leaders in our larger faith and in our world, a community that sees itself as a flagship within our faith. And I am excited for you in embracing this vision. But before I go further, I want to share with you a story of another congregation that had a vision of being a flagship congregation. So almost 10 years ago now, I was called to serve the UU Congregation of Phoenix, Arizona. Now, they were the first congregation in the state of Arizona. They helped plant all the other congregations in the Phoenix area. They were at one time one of the largest congregations in the West. But then they went through a long period of difficulty. They faced conflict frequent transition of ministers, declining membership. They lost their way. They lost their sense of mission and purpose. But then a few lay leaders, a few incredible leaders of that congregation began to hear a different call, a longing in their hearts to again be a leader in the state. But there was something that they needed to do first, they needed to attend to the health and the spiritual vitality of the congregation. Now, they felt compelled to be a stronger moral voice in Phoenix. They saw the injustice that was happening around them, and they felt the call to our values as Unitarian Universalists to stand up for the collective humanity of the people of Phoenix. But first, they had to work on their own health and strength. So they cast an overarching vision to become a beloved community, and they began to take first their worship life more seriously. They made space not just for the intellectual exploration of religion, but the actual practice of religious community through ritual and prayer, embodied and practiced in mind, heart, and spirit. They worked on the practice of covenant, and finding ways to practice discernment in times of disagreement, but always centered on this question of how to live into the beloved community. And suddenly, and it really did seem sudden, the congregation began to grow, new energy and a stronger sense of collective mission developed. And even though the work of justice was not first on their plate, when the issues of racial profiling and SB 1070 and Sheriff Arpaio came into full view, they were ready to partner and bring a collective and powerful voice that led to national leadership on the issue of immigrant rights. 
And this work continues today, but it all grows out of an embrace for ourselves as a religious community and to attend to a deeper practice of our faith because our most effective justice work always grows from a strong spiritual foundation. And while I know that you all know this lesson, I see you living it out in your mission and in your message and in your community life, it can be an easy thing to forget. And the church has forgotten it in the past. In times of crisis or uncertainty, in times of political division, it can be easy to become fearful, focused inward, and lose sight of our larger calling and our mission. And in times of success, it can also be easy to become complacent and fall into the rhythms of just doing the work of the church rather than being the church. Right? So I want to charge you to be the church to be the temple, to be Unity Temple, not in the building, but in your lives and in your mission and in how you nurture a spiritual community for all ages here. Take your role as a religious community seriously. Practice, teach, and nurture the qualities of our deepest humanity and our capacity for compassion in one another and in your children. One of the great indigenous leaders that I worked with in Phoenix, Tupac Enrique Acosta, told me once that the whole work of religion and spirituality is simply to help us walk more fully into our humanity. to walk more fully into the depths of our humanity. That is our work here as spiritual and religious people. Another way that I use to describe this is about the beloved community. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King defined beloved community as one of radical welcome and overflowing compassion and care within as well as a community that could not tolerate racism, discrimination, or poverty outside. King understood that when we develop the highest capacity to love within ourselves, it extends our care and sense of mutuality to all others. The love we seek to teach in the beloved community is an overflowing, universal love what King described as the love of God operating in the human heart. Friends, we need this depth of powerful spiritual religious community, especially in the moments that we are facing today. Because what we are facing today is not just a political crisis or an economic crisis. It is fundamentally a moral crisis. And what is required of us in this time is a greater capacity to be dedicated to love, to the love of all people and to the love of creation, a greater capacity to keep our hearts open, loving, and courageous in the midst of the ever-growing efforts to instill fear and division among us. The challenges that we face today will require a greater practice of faith than the protections of privilege have required in the past. In this time of growing repression and heartbreak, our communities can and need to be places of collective care and ministry, of resiliency and resistance. We need beloved communities that will hold us when we are heartbroken and lost and feeling pulled by despair. And we need beloved communities that will lift us up and give us courage for the work we are called to. Communities that nurture compassion and confidence in our children and that pass on the values of beauty and truth, justice and love. We need communities that make room for our heartbreak while also reminding us of the goodness and the joy that is always present in life. Today, I see across our faith community people flooding into our Unitarian Universalist churches looking for a message of love that resists fear and that confronts us on a daily basis. We can be a part 
of answering this longing. We can be a part of this moral awakening, but we have to take our role as a religious community seriously. Because friends, the truth is, is that if we are standing at a defining moment, a moment where deep transformation is needed, we are not going to find that transformation on a call to victory or domination or division. We will find it simply in the call to love and to unity. May you, Unity Temple, as you celebrate this great day, rededicate yourself to the practice of our faith, a faith that understands that no one is outside the circle of love, a faith that calls our hearts to love with an overflowing universalism, a faith that offers gratitude for the gift of life and understands the fundamental interdependence of all life, and a faith that calls to us to respond to that love through acts and works of justice. May you live this faith more powerfully, more boldly, more lovingly each day. May you live the words and the calling of your mission to inspire courage and nurture wonder and serve the community. And may this building and this campus of yours be a foundation upon which your mission and your ministry thrives and makes a real and measurable difference in your lives in the lives of your children, and in the lives of the larger community and world. Blessings. Blessings on this day and all the days ahead.